Yeah. We have uh, one minute to go in the background. It's all empty. That's where the women will be playing a bit later. Uh, but almost kickoff, almost time for those frights. And there we see the handshake and the players are off. What is Hikaru going to surprise us with? What do you think? Hikaru can basically open with anything, but he does the chess player ritual of adjusting all the pieces mm -hmm. and keeping us on our toes. And E4. E4. He pushes the king's pawn. Um, I'm expecting the players to be quite direct in a morning round. You, the last thing you want uh, when your kind of routine is thrown off, your body clock is uh, off a bit. You don't want to kind of be freestyling too early in the game. Uh, you need to know exactly what's going on. You want ideally to land some opening theory, force your opponent to be the one to think. Mm -hmm. uh, quick e5 from Shaprinov, who used to be a religious uh, Sicilian player. He used to play the knight off uh, without fail, but nowadays you need a solid option and solid string to your bow. And he's doing great in the tournament. A draw against Nakamura with black would be a fantastic result. And he plays the Petrov uh, defense. Talking of solidity, Ivanka. And uh, yeah, main, meanwhile, we have the game, the top board clash between uh, Caruana up on our board. So, where should we start with? Yeah, well, let's uh, start there. Okay. And yeah, let me see if I can pull up my opening book. Yes. It's quite a rare branch of the Petrov, as far as I know. Um, Castle's now Karu playing that move with a flourish, but he's spent quite a long time on the clock. Karu. He's been surprised a few times this tournament. It's rare to see that from the top players. Normally they're the ones launching the surprise. Uh, maybe the Petrov, uh, Knight F6 down came as a surprise, just trying to catch on E4. Shaparinov, I think he's played this before, but not too regularly. Uh, he's kind of famous as a Sicilian player. But knight takes pawn. Uh, the White Knight kick back now. Black recaptures the sacrificed pawn. And C4. Okay, so not one of the main lines with an early D4. Uh, in this position, I think knight c3 and d4 are by far the two main moves. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you mentioned uh, the other day d3, bishop d3, there's yeah. various options, but c4 <coughs> uh, aims to take away d5 from black. Bishop to e7, d5 played anyway now. And after bishop to d3, black moves the bishop for the second time in this game. Uh, I believe playing moves like knight c6 would most likely transpose into other main lines, but uh, bishop b4 check. Uh, making use of the fact that the white pawns on c4 so cannot block. White does block with the knight instead. Castle, castle. And okay, we could see a very simplified position here, Yvanka. Is this a rare one? It is rare. Uh, only 11 games in the database. But uh, yeah, you, you're right. And white, black has been playing knight takes d2. It's also possible for black to get bishop f5. He has done. He has done that. Oh, okay. King in front. Yeah, no, very, that's very nice. I mean, yeah, you might even go take this pawn if you need to be uh, cynical about it. But, yeah, rook end games, they're tough. Mm -hmm. uh, Chaparinov, I'm really shocked he's played 95, though, because it just smells wrong. It just looks yeah. wrong. It's a last resort. And, um, okay, there's no time on his clock. A bit of panic involved, but uh, ultimately looks are not deceiving here. Knight takes knight, just yeah. wins. And can we show that really clinical line that you came up with? Because that was just fantastic. And I'll give yeah. a check. Check. Um, King uh, steps back somewhere. Let's Where go to we F. Go we went to G7 last time. Let's yeah, go maybe F7. F7. Okay, now F7. you step up with the king. Okay, rook behind. And now King F5. F5. Yeah, rook E3. And the thing is, there's always going to be a check. Like yeah. This check and wherever you move. Never stop the way yeah. But I hear my name Grass creates a relay Life is happy but it's so insane We must merely make a stride Savannah
is gonna come The birds have just begun We will always take a stand For the people, for the land Let's go back to Penning white down to this pawn. Okay, how to win? In some scenarios, you even just march forward. I was gonna ask. Let's let's uh, march forward as far as we can. Push, push. Yes. Um. Yep. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. Okay. So, black passes, right? Okay. King g7. Okay. Ace. A6. A6. King. Okay, I'll put the rook on. Mm. <laughs> I don't even know how to try and go about saving this one. Uh, yeah. Push the pawn to a7. And now, king takes pawn. King takes pawn. Yeah. The problem for uh, black is no time to take this one. Of course, the white rook just moves, and you make a new queen, or you could check on yeah. if you want to. But then, ag but then again, it's very difficult to cross over. So maybe I, I can't actually. Yeah. This one, for example, you can win this pawn, and I just wait. How does white but actually how win does this win? one? Because uh, yeah, it's a G pawn. Yeah, I remember you saying that. Yeah, famously, for example, this position a check and takes. Um, I'm really surprised the evaluation we, uh, bar we have on our screen says it's winning for white. Because as far as I know, this is just a dead draw. Um, the problem is you can march your pawn to G6 and black just says, so what? <laughs> uh, black just waits and any time the white king moves, black just continues to wait. Until the white king gets close enough to protect the b pawn, about to free up the rook, and black starts giving checks. Nowhere to hide suddenly. Um, so actually, marching the pawn to a7 has some risk involved. D didn't you have a really similar position against Hikaru Nakamura when you saved it? <laughs> I did uh, against Hikaru, except yeah. the g pawn didn't exist, and that is the Vancouver position. Yeah. Um, so that would be, for example, I'm going to make this happen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ignore the next couple of moves. Uh, ignore uh, the fact that white can move the rook away. Uh, it would be something along these lines where actually the best way to defend against the pawn on a6 would be uh, to put the rook from the side and yeah, you check from the side essentially. And uh, yeah, nowhere to hide for the white king. You check and then until the king approaches and then you go behind and draw. Yeah. But uh, of course that's a pipe dream right now for Treparinov. And Hikaru's actually just gone route one. He's gone direct, he's taken the pawn off first and now he's going to move his rook. Uh, the key thing is not to put your rook passive. I really love this one, I was going to suggest, uh, because rook to f4 now, going after the remaining pawn, would be nicely met by rook to d4. Mm, and very actually, nice. white's rook gets behind and propels the a pawn forward. Yeah. And, oh wow, this is going to be really instructive if uh, rook a3. I guess you just go back. Can you not go a a6? You can play a6. I was reluctant to get checked away. Checked back, but maybe it's still winning. Uh, maybe you go d4 and you kind of head across. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Head yeah. across, and you showed me the well, you showed us <laughs> earlier about how to put the rook on c6, and then you just uh, you snake in yeah. and use the white rook for shelter. This looks winning. Um, you could also, for example, in this position, if you want to maintain full control, play the move rook d5. You can go yeah. after this pawn first and only later go in ahead of your. Uh, yeah. Hikaru Nakamura and Ivan Cheparinov and there we can see the moment that Cheparinov resigned and setting the kings into their respective positions but uh, 
Oh, and here comes the handshake. And with that victory, Hikaru Nakamura moves in to the shared lead. There is now a six-way tie at the top.